Now let's move to the neuroscience. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about two particular brain regions, the parietal lobe and the amygdala. Moving on, Newberg talks about the sense of unity or connectedness that is a critical ingredient in all extremist groups. Newberg says, and I quote, the sense of unity exists primarily within the individual's given group. This is most evident in cults, in which a person or group of people become so close that they completely exclude others from the group. As their interactions continue, their belief system can become more and more bizarre and extreme." End quote. So what does this look like in the brain? Newberg continues, and I quote, "...the sense of unity or connectedness is believed to occur in large part in the parietal lobe. As a person experiences a sense of oneness and connectedness with a particular ideology or group, the parietal lobe is affected such that it alters the perception of self in relation to the world and in relation to others. As the sense of connection grows stronger within the group, those outside the group holding ideas contrary to the group are viewed in more negative ways." End quote. This sheds a lot of light on the experience of cult members who really feel like they've lost reality uh, when they get absorbed in this strong collectivism and can have this strong sense of awakening when they finally remove themselves from the group. This is a matter of the parietal lobe altering our sense of self and our worldview in the face of a strong social cohesion. Given the strong social element then, getting caught up in a group like this is not just about the convincing nature of their arguments, but as Newberg puts it, and I quote, these experiences also carry with them a profound sense of realness. The ideas espoused in the particular belief system become the reality for the participants. The more real and the more unified the belief system becomes, the more its ideas become the reality for that person and the more alternative ideas become unreal or evil. Since the ideas of people from different belief systems are considered unreal or evil, a cult follower may have little difficulty viewing those others with great contempt and hatred, believing that they are perpetrating great evil and hence need to be exterminated. A complex decision incorporating ethics, philosophy, and theology." End quote. When we think of unity, we usually put it in a positive light to have a strong brotherly connection. And yet, unity is closely related to conformity, which of course has a negative connotation. The idea that we would lose our objectivity and our criticality in a group. This reminds me of a biblical passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, from the New World Translation. Now I urge you, brothers, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you should all speak in agreement and that there should be no divisions among you but that you may be completely united in the same mind and in the same line of thought." End quote. What starts with warm and fuzzies, resulting from this work of the parietal lobe, can cross a threshold to where our semblance of self and our worldview is warped by the strong interconnectedness with the group. The second area of the brain associated with a religious extremism is the amygdala. Now we know that the amygdala is the anxiety or fear center of the brain. Now this goes back to the happy prison of the brain and the very real threat, the very real fear that is experienced when an alternative viewpoint challenges the existential beliefs of the member of an extremist group. Newberg says this, and I quote, if the alternative belief system is correct, that implies that the brain itself does not really understand the world properly, a vulnerable position to be in. If we have an incorrect perspective on the world, then the emotional and anxiety areas of the brain, such as the amygdala, become highly active in order to force us to find the correct information so that we can live more effectively. It is far easier then to assume that the alternative belief system is wrong and that what we have believed all along is still correct. This settles our brain down and makes us feel much more comfortable." End quote. In many fundamentalist groups, the fear of outsiders cannot be understated the amygdala will certainly be activated when religious doctrine states that a supernatural wicked force who had the power to manipulate my thinking towards evil existed outside the group's bounds and that outsiders were, not individually, but as a collective, under this wicked being's control. And as other ex-members will no doubt confirm, this neurological fear pathway remains, even after you understand intellectually 
that is with the cognitive areas of the brain, like the prefrontal cortex, that the belief is not evidence-based. Given that we all have a parietal lobe, which will help us feel unity with others, and we all have an amygdala, which will make us feel afraid of outsiders, Newberg leaves us with this to conclude chapter three, and I quote, the question that always needs to be asked is, what exactly does a person feel at one with? If the person feels at one with a limited set of beliefs or a limited group of people, there can be extreme antagonism and hatred for people with alternative beliefs. And if the amygdala reaction is strong, the person might conclude that not only are adherents to the alternative belief system wrong, but evil as well. This can foment great anger and hostility, with the person ultimately coming to the conclusion that eradication is the only logical choice." End quote. 